Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only the human turret, one of the best ARs to ever do it. Give it up for the world champ, Sam LaRue, a.k.a. Octane. We got some of the best analysis in the game, world champion himself. Give it up for Christopher Duarte, a.k.a. Parasite. We got the one and only the multi-world champion, a multi-champion. Give it up for the legend, the icon, Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aix. And then, of course, we got the one and only the executive producer of The Flank. Give it up for Ben Ye Make some noise, folks. Ben J. Let's kick it off with you. What's going on? Uh God this morning. I watched Tottenham get absolutely smashed. So that was great. They're terrible. Uh, Tottenham's they were, terrible. They got, absolutely, we just cannot win in, in Newcastle. It's all good. Uh but other than that, it's been vibes today. A great sports day, Tom. We uh we got the Masters. Masters set up beautifully for Sunday. And we got UFC 300, one of the best UFC cards potentially of all time. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I'm locked in. I got a little golf stream as well at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm excited. Oh, I got a little golf stream, stream going. I like oh, that, little, Ben. Little, a little early morning golf stream tomorrow. It's a little nice and warm. Yeah. Too. Shout out to Dior in the chat who's showing a lot of love right now. Show him some love. Sam, how are you doing today, Sam? You doing all right? Doing good, bro. Um, matches were a little bit of a schnooze, but uh, all things considered, doing well. That's good, Sam. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, we were a little bit of a snooze, Sam. I'm not going to lie. But it was always a great time in a watch party, as always, man. Uh, Pat, you doing all right? You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good, Tom. That's uh, good, Pat. That's good. Not too much to report on. I'm just doing good, you know? Yeah, Pat. Another day in the office, huh, Pat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duarte, you doing all right? I'm doing good. My sleep schedule is a little bit in shambles. Uh, put in a shift yesterday to make up some hours from uh, the night that I missed, and mm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in my gym attire because I'm gonna go right after the show. I'm like I'm all over the place. I today, like that, Tom. bro. You're dedicated. I like I'm, that I'm straight everywhere. passion. I like Thank that, Chris. Uh, Appreciate it, Ben. What's going on? Why does Seth and, and Tony keep? Why do they both tweet out what premier uh, Premier League team should they support? Did you? Because I because I think they're like trying to get into the sport. You know, they're obviously went to that's, that's lit. That's and dope. The U of A thing, and they're trying to figure out Premier League. I'm trying to steer them away from like the obvious ones. You know, well, like, like Manchester like, United, Man United, City. United, or like City, or like Liverpool. Like you know, just like yeah, supporting like cringe, like popular teams. Like pick something a little bit more, you know, fun. Yeah, that is cool. I'm sure that is cool that they get into the sport. The, I assume Hector's also trying to push in the West Ham, which I wouldn't advise. Yeah, that's but. Hector's team. He got, so the Chicago Huntsman logo, didn't he get inspiration from the West Ham logo? He got inspiration I mean, from that, put right? I mean, put them side by side and you tell me. Mm-hmm. No, they look pretty similar. You know, they look yeah. different, but, I mean, you could tell there's it, some inspiration there. It's there. inspired, which is fine. I mean, Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, I like that. The derivative but. uniforms and logos over the history of sports, like, that's just, you know, how it is yeah. uh, in any industry, but, yeah. But no, I, I'm, I think they're just trying to get in. This is just trying to get in the mix, you know. I know Davis is a big fan. Davis and I talk about soccer. Yeah, all the time, Davis played the sport. I think Zin and uh, Zin and Seth are trying to feel it out a little bit. Yeah. You know? But let's move on. Uh, we had three matches today. We had a lot of great matches. Uh, uh, like Sam said, some of them were a few uh, were a snooze. A couple of them, but uh, you know, it's all a part of the process here, folks. With the with the CDL, we we actually start things off. Uh, here first with the first series of the day. Let's swap on over. We had the Los Angeles Gorillas going up against the Toronto Ultra. Uh, this was a 3-0 for Toronto Ultra. We'll scroll down and take a look at the stat sheet. Jesus fucking mod on. Adam Assault saving these guys from the red carpet. Barely. LAG continue to struggle here in the CDL, even in stage three. I mean, Duarte, these are your guys. We'll start off with you. What's going on with the Los Angeles Gorillas, Chris? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really watch the series, but I mean, just same old, same old. Like these guys are better on land, but uh, the you know, online they can't fucking buy one. And you know, everyone likes to clown on assault. You know, I clown on him sometimes too. That is my buddy, but at the same time, like he's the only one that shot back here in this series. But the rest of them, they're just getting cooked. I mean, they're just they're just too up and down. Um, I think like this team obviously has problems but like they're not going to make roster changes i don't believe um they need diamond con to step up online they need assault to start playing more consistently and then estriel needs to get back in a form and i think fame's been playing pretty consistent for them over the last couple of uh you know matches and stuff like that and even at land but you know their snd has been the only thing that's saving them and even now in stage two they haven't won one yet obviously two matches in um, but yeah, they need to yeah. they need to get back. Well, I, to, I definitely to think it's concerning, Chris, that the you know they they kind of live and died by the S and D, and now they're not even winning that. So like that's pretty concerning, no? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't well, know. I think we'll the other... they, they still have an easier split um, going in. I mean, this is probably one of their harder matches, if not the hardest match they're going to have the split. So we'll see. I mean, yeah. I mean, Chris, the the Mike is in only two series. 
is they haven't played a close map in either six of these maps. You can argue that first map against Vegas was a little close. It was like a 40 point game. His LG made a little bit of a mini comeback, but outside of that, I mean, what? The, the, this series, none of the respawns were that close. And then the control against Vegas is also a blowout. So, yeah. It's fine. I just, it's tough. I man. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, like, uh, this, like, the thing is, though, when we talk about like all these other teams, like it's so it's so much easier to talk about them because they've made changes, right? Like there's different perspectives, different teammates, um, different versions of every team we're getting. I mean, this is the same LAG we've seen for the last, you know, couple of splits. Like when we go over their matches, it's you're, it's kind of hard to find something new to talk about at this point. <laughs> but here's what, I don't, here's what I don't understand. Like if they're not going to pick anybody up, then what was the point of having flames on the bench if they're not going to call them up as a sub? What, he was wasting just, cash with a substitute you're just at that wasting point. Wasting cash on your on your your you know flames and were a duo for a long time <coughs> with challengers. Like if the you're not going to give them, requires them to have a sub. The you league can requires them to have a sub. The league yeah. requires them to have rule, a sub. I thought that rule changed. I thought you um, can't do that anymore. These guys no. are all close, so obviously you can still, still, still do that. Obviously, they're they're still also putting on their boy. Not that flames doesn't deserve it. Flames definitely deserves at least a substitute spot. I think he's really good. But I mean, like. Wait, at the on. end of the day, I, mean, I thought, if they don't, I talked if, about this. Isn't their coach not getting paid? Their coaching staff isn't getting paid. Yeah, oh, something about working for I free. Think, no, I think well, I think which Viaz is crazy. Is, Why would I think you work Viaz for free? I think is the rest of them aren't. I mean, it's still like something on your resume, right? Like there they are, can do the same. Are, yeah, I guess it's other, true. Like for if they're resume, not, it's if, true. If they're, if I mean, they, I'm, I'm, I know them. I might hurt um, you they, coaching LAG on the resume. I, I know, I know the <laughs> coaching staff. Uh, they still, they still have jobs <laughs> we, we outside of thirty. Check my resume they, out. They <laughs> still ahead, have guys. jobs outside of. Uh, they still have jobs outside of coaching and stuff like that. But also, like they do a lot of like analytical work. So, like, regardless of like how good they are as a team, like they're still putting in the work it's still there so i mean yeah at, they'd, they'd be doing the same thing in challengers for free right? that's good so. to know that their yeah, spirits and, are high I'll, I'll say this just to be clear there are been a number of teams over the years in the cdl that have had either analysts or assistant coaches or S D coaches that haven't gotten paid on their staffs and they're basically just like kind of interns or just assistants so just to be clear like this is not an exclusive situation at lag mm -hmm. and also when it comes to like flames like i mean at the end like if they feel like flames would move the needle, um, they would probably put them in, but uh, they clearly are still convinced so that, then, so then drop that is not their issue. This is what I don't understand. So then why, why do you have a sub flames? who's never going to play and you're never going to like, I just don't, I don't understand what the point is. Why would they drop flames? What did flames do to get off a substitute? That you could swap in for either Eric, you know, diamond con or assault to make this team. They better. don't think there's anyone out there that's going to make the team better. Then they're psychopaths, bro. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Why do we bro. do this? Why do we do this like, every time? What? Like, we already established. We've already established that they should probably not, change. Or bro. get out of the CDL. Yeah. Uh, they're they're lost. Get, yeah, I agree with Pat. Hopefully, they're not here next year, man. Yeah. Let's go on to, to Sam. Sam, what did you think about the series? Even from uh, Toronto's perspective, what, what did you think? Because I know we've been talking about LAG, but Toronto, I thought, looked pretty good. Dylan Envoy, he had a rough map one again, uh, but yeah. he definitely picked it up as the series went on, and we started seeing I that old Dil, Dylan. I called Dill top four purge. He's, uh, his hard play was a bit... It's been pretty bad, but his S&D was great. He said in the interview, he kind of started running at him to get some confidence, but... Uh, yeah, the first map was just all Toby. He he was like you see on the scoreboard. He was genuinely unbelievable. I mean, um, this is this series is a repeat to uh, Sam of their land performance. Kleenex literally hooped yeah, them at their land series. It, I mean, Dill's giving you nine and twenty six, and there was no point during this map <laughs> where I thought LAG could have won it, which is like legit. Like they were three v fouring. Toby was one v fouring, and Toby LAG was still didn't stand a chance. Um, yeah. Dill took over map two, and then map three was just a masterclass across the board, but. This LG team is non-competitive online. I don't care if they're top six online beating terrible teams. Like, it's not how it used to be where you can get away with just being a land player and it won't hurt you anymore. There's 70 points up for grabs. Like, this team is non-competitive, period. Mm. Yeah, I, I I honestly agree with you. I, I feel like something needs to happen. And uh, if they want to make... If they want to make a change now, do you think Flames is able to come into the lineup now, Chris? That's do you think that's yeah, a potential I mean, for them? If 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 they if they wanted to make the change, they can easily put them in. It wouldn't be an issue at all. I mean, yeah, it's just I mean, whether they want to do. do I, and, and I'm not defending them. Like I, I'm not, I'm just telling you what I know. Like at, like I I agree. I think they should have made a change. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can. I think they need to maybe have put some more faith in their in, in themselves and be like, okay, like. 
our, our roster is not working, but if we retain a decent amount of the pieces, we can channel that, you know, performance that we have on land and maybe get some more consistency online by making something, you know, something else happen. But. It's just like a, it, it, like this, this t entire team situation is just like a spit in the face of like challenger players and, and people in the league. Like you have, you clearly have a team that is desperate need of upgrading, whether it's on the organization to just, if they're just saying no, like this is your fucking team, make it work. Or if it's on the players and the players genuinely think that like, this is what they want, like, it's reaching a level of delusion I at this think, point. I think, I, I think, from the organizational standpoint, um, who they have on their roster, substitute included, is their team. Like for the rest of the year. So if the, only if the org is making it make is so they flames. cannot make changes, that's a whole different conversation. We don't obviously know that, so we just yeah. have to spe like I'm speculate on it. Pretty sure that's what. Uh, that I'm praying are. to God that it has nothing to do with the players' decisions. I've already told you. Outside of who is signed right now. They cannot go out and get more. So that, it's then, flames or then, no one. Then, you know, so then we just so again, have to. So it's a moot point to talk about changes. Then I listen. Yeah. Like I get it when it's when it's an elite top four team and they're picking up a sub who's never going to play. There's an LEG team who was more likely than not going to rotate a player in their lineup, and they picked up someone who they played with before. And they have no intention. It seems of putting them in the lineup. It just seems weird to me. I think yeah, I, seems, I, 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 mean, I agree. With that. Like, it seems like they're. They cut off one of their fingers for legit no smart reason. At, at like the very that. least, I, I wouldn't mind seeing like a trial or like even yeah, that's what I'm saying. like if, if he's on the roster, you're not signing someone new. He's already there. Throw him in the fucking roster. Yeah. Try him. Just give him a like, try. Yeah. Does it doesn't hurt to try at all. Uh Pat, you got any thoughts before we head into some clips? No, this team sucks. Okay. Let's <laughs> like move back. on to the clips. <laughs> I want you guys to take a look at this spawn because I actually thought Minnesota had a chance to act. They had a chance to do this here. I hear you on Minnesota. Or sorry, <laughs> sorry, LAG. I, the colors, bro. It's the purple. Tom's already on the last series. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's, that pur it's the purple. It's getting me fucking confused. The purple and white. But they actually get to this next hard point, and I'm thinking they're good to go. So it's a four dead. They do a good job cleaning up these uh, these kills, and they're able to get into this hard point here. And I want you to see how they set up, uh, how the spawns come in here for Toronto. And I want to just see how you guys think, uh, or what you guys think of these spawns, bro. Because I thought these spawns made absolutely no fucking sense here. You this see is where... not the first time we've seen this happen, by the way. I, I, we I, saw this we, happen another time. We did see we've this We speculated happen. that it's like, it has something to do with how much time's remaining at old and like all that kind of stuff. And I think that like, Look we were that. kind of right. The one. entire side of the map is open. I don't understand. So, even the spawns. So for, for these initial spawns were weird uh, when they were spawning. I even think these parallel spawns here are a little weird. So you see a few spawns come in from LAG. Then you see Kleenex. He spawns up. Scrap. He spawns up. They spawn up P2. They're all spawning on the same side of the map. And then look where Toronto spawns here after LAG get these kills. They spawn right behind them. I just don't. You can't read that, bro. You cannot read those spawns. I mean, there this isn't is, a single soul on the right side of the map. Nobody's there. The, that whole side of the map is completely open. The whole ent entire fucking side. And then you can see how this opens things up for Toronto. They get into the hard point, and they end up getting the dub here. I mean, I thought Minnes uh, sorry, LAG, if they would have actually made the... Uh, if they didn't get those spawns, if Toronto didn't get those spawns, I think LAG might have been able to win this map. What do you guys think? I mean, I think they would have had a chance, yeah. I mean, this shit's... I mean, watching it... I, I didn't get to watch this match. Or would have um, had a chance. Is, Maybe not win the is, map, but it would have got at least a hold opportunity. Yeah, they would have gotten an opportunity. Those spawns are fucking absurd, bro. Like... Uh, Makes no sense, bro. And watching is kind of frustrating. Point, bro. It's so... Yeah, it's it's frustrating. For sure. But I don't game think... Trash, were we, were we seeing these spawns or in the very beginning of the game? I don't think we were. Um, we've seen a... I don't remember this the looks series, like a, this looks like I remember going over something similar to this. Okay, this isn't like Sears related. How the fuck have we not had a spawn update this entire time? Like no, we haven't had. Have, we, spawns we've had have one changed spawn for the worse, did they not? Did, I think spawns did change, and it was for the worse. No, they've only changed. On, they only changed on Skid Row. Like at least that they put in patch notes that they actually said that changed. Um, they haven't had a spawn update this entire time. They've done a good job of like. You're you know, sure putting that, out sure other updates, true? adding no, maps. They, I, they, they I mean, the, the spawns had too. to change when they changed the, had, the hills. When they changed the hills, they had their spawn up. They had their major spawn updates. They had a spawn. Okay, so they had a spawn update before they changed the hills, and then they just changed the hills, which obviously changed the spawns, and then everyone had to learn them. But I'm talking about the way spawns work. They only changed it on Skid Row, and they haven't changed it on any other map. And we're seeing shit like this happen not only in Hardpoint. This shit happens in Control too. The fact that we haven't had a spawn update is absurd, and I'm not even sure if this is something the players have brought up to, like, whoever's, like, their liaison for getting competitive changes, but, like, bro, watching that would just piss me the fuck off. 
But yeah. uh, listen, Pat, all or uh, Chris, I'll say is this is there have been past years where the players really put together a fucking like presentation on how Spawn should work and it was just completely ignored. Like I think they're kind of burnt out for trying Bro, to MW2, for MW2 do this. MW2 had better spawns than this, and that game was fucking horrible. Mm. Yeah, let's move on. We've got another clip here. I mean, this comes from the S and D. Uh, I thought this was an opportunity here where LAG might have been able to, you know, get some rounds on the board because they were honestly getting ran in the search. The first four rounds went to Toronto Ultra, but this is where Dylan Envoy just kind of kicked up from that first map. Uh, it was a big two-piece from him. Jumps the corner. Inside finds another one. It was a, a clean trade there. I just think from LAG here, like, after you get this first kill, like, just stay down. Like, keep holding this. Fame pulls out his pistol. He starts to sprint a little bit. I think Estriel started to reload there, some shit. I just thought they should have just kept holding, and just they probably would have funneled more kills there. But it was a good round from Dylan Envoy. He's able to get a two piece. He's eleven and two in his in in this map, and then we go into the next round. This is the five two round. This is where Insight had a hundred dollars <laughs> on the line. Had a hundred dollars. All Insight had yeah. to do was win uh. this one v one and get seven kills. He tags up Diamond Con here a little bit when he walks out in the open. And somehow, some way, Diamond Con was able to finesse and win this 1v1. I think Jamie just missed some shots right there. He lost fucking composure. You could see it in his face. Uh, I'm thinking there's no way we're seeing another comeback here. This is not going to, there's no way this he is lost happening. You lost composure. You lost composure. <laughs> if anyone's already seen the clip, it's fucking common. Bro, he could, he could, he, everybody he lost just composure. just stayed behind the forklift and kept walling him and then just like, like, he nah, had to he, I actually two. think he played it good. He just, whipped. I think the child was fine. He just bricked. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously, but I'm saying he could have played it even more, like, safe. Like, he could have been uh, a credit. If he and then we go to. to the 5-3 round, and I like to call this one the LAG do fucking nothing. Uh, <laughs> because they get the first blood. It's a 4v3 situation. And then you can just see how this plays out. Matter of fact, I'll kind of skim through it a little bit. But they just take so long to make a play. Finally, with 30 seconds hits that clock, they decide to throw some smokes and try and make a play here. They find scrap. Team kill goes down. 3v2 situation. The streak comes in from Dylan Envoy. There is less than 20 seconds left on the clock now. They have the man advantage, and they are not yet on that bomb site. Why? Because they waited way too long to make a play. Kleenex comes in, finds the kill, and this one's all she wrote. What is LAG doing in this round? Wait, what is what is Estriel doing in this situation? Estriel, what are they all doing? What was the Bro, play that, call? Because, like, Estriel lets a guy just run through courtyard. This is how this whole thing breaks down. After the streak. Well, he definitely gets tagged up a little bit here. He throws the smoke down. Scrap puts some bullets into him. Yeah. Then they call on the streak. The streak comes in. Estrio goes inside and CD. Runs away, he runs away to fucking a, like a street. Yeah, he does. I don't, I, if I don't he know hold, what's If going he holds on. his cross and keeps these guys off, he gives Adam time to... Now nah, he know, got like, tagged up, bro. He got tagged. Uh, Envoy was putting shots into him from deep. He was putting shots into him. He ended up fucking running away. Mm -hmm. And Kleenex ended up hitting it. Very good play from Toronto. Because they worked together. Kleenex hit the gap while Dylan looked over him. He backed they down. They're trying to get to like the tank. I mean, they I, just, I they just they waited off. too they long. They just tweaked off the timer. They just tweaked they... because of the fucking timer. Yeah, guys, listen. They got a first blood in the first 30 seconds. Rotate the bomb and hit something. Use your numbers and make a play. Why are we waiting to the last 20 seconds to try and get the bomb down? They think they're prime Navi and like fucking Counter Strike, bro. And they wait till twenty seconds to plant. Yeah, they just complete. I thought Great they throw that around. Bad. Thank you, Sam. Pat, anything to say on that round? If you're LAG, would you have made a play earlier? Uh, yeah, I think the team kill was kind of unfortunate as well. I don't know if it was like a nade or trophy blow. But they did get a kill what, before but... that then too, so I don't think uh, really matter. Yeah. It was still a three v two after that fact. I think they were kind of just paranoid about Dill's streak more than anything. Like, it's hard to go for it. Like, I think Dill actually actually misplayed the streak and gave them still enough time to make a play because he boosted it right away. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the team kill was super unfortunate. I think they were just worried about the streak. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Sam, but I feel like if you know the other team has a streak, you want to play aggressive because you want to try, yeah, to, make try to play get, like, so Yeah, try to make something quick happen so they have to react with the streak. Right, and, like, try yeah. and burn the streak. I, 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 I just don't think it makes any sense to play slow when you know they have a streak. It, yeah. it, they feel like they bit themselves in the ass there. They probably could have extended that, but... Uh, that happens there, and we go into the control, and then this was the one round where uh, Toronto Ultra was able to win the offense. They end up smoking them in the control. It wasn't even close. You can see how it kind of unfolds. It's Kleenex who takes her out left. Uh, Kleenex was unbelievable. Uh, the whole series long, but you can see the play that he ends up. He ends up taking a route here. 
Uh, one goes down. Kleenex is able to get onto the point. He finds a 1v1 win. They win all the fights. Red and just like that, LAG is already in a blender. Yeah, LAG is fucking trolling, bro. Yeah. They're, 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 they're triple trolling. pushing out Junk Spawn, clearly not tracking names because Toby walks through the middle of the map no for free has, and no nobody's worried red. about it. Nobody's right in now. red. They're, they're triple playing for the Junk Spawn. I mean, this is just a breakdown. Yeah, this is bad. This is uh, just, I mean, you just look at the mini map here and you can just see how much space there is on the left side of the map. You have all of the map open, even reds open. I mean, nobody's looking at red. They push through red. Nobody's there, looking there, at it. There's essentially two players or there's two places on the map that you need to hold on this defense. One is you need to block junk and one needs to just sit top red and prevent them yeah. from hopping up and hitting vending alley. And that's like literally two staple players. And I guess they tried to get one, but they just forgot about the other side. I mean, dude, they, they, we, we, we came into the clip like probably halfway through, but Toby <laughs> took this route 30 seconds ago, 20 seconds ago. Like, they're yeah. not tracking names at all. Like, there's nobody that's like Arrow looks like they're trying to hold a pinch. I mean, uh, this is just a breakdown in the I comms. Mean, they, get, thing, I think. They, get the initial, uh, they get the initial wave. Like, there's one, there's two. They get the third guy. Like, they know done. Toby's missing. Yeah. Like, they, if they're... It's too quiet. It's so quiet right now. There's there's a third. There's inside. That right here they should be calming. Yo, where's the last? Where's the last guy? He could be pinching. He could be coming through mid. Like we're missing one. They just didn't keep track of players here. And like Estriel's like looking for it, kind of, but like he just left out to dry because his entire team decided to take yeah, the elves and run to the forest to junk. But yeah. You can see how the rest of it just kind of collapses for him. I and mean, I think what that probably goes down to communication, right? When you're losing players oh, like that. I mean, people are just not keeping track and they're not common. That's usually how it goes. Toronto Ultra end up slamming the uh, Los Angeles Gorillas. Guys, any final thoughts on Ultra versus LAG? Any final thoughts? Nope. No, LAG's got to gotta, I gotta get it going. Somehow they're not going to get it going. <laughs> I mean, it's just a miracle fucking lose bracket, win two fucking series, and make it to Saturday night and get eliminated, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Carolina, I don't, Rocker, I don't, Boston, Optic, Miami. These tonight. guys are clearly not good. They're in a shit state, at least online. Um, But they they do have an easier schedule, so, like, they need to find something. They need to find at least, like, two, three wins. They need here, online otherwise points, they're period, shocked, bro. Like, They need online points, period. They need as many online points as they can get, guys. Let's be honest. They need as much as they can get. Because those, those guys, teams guys, in guys, 8, 9, talking, 10, 11, 12. Just like, stop caring about those guys. They're not going to be a champs. It's all good. Okay. They might still make it. <laughs> they a might still make place it. Right now. They might don't don't write them it. off, Pat. Everyone else is Pat, also dog fuck, shit. Pat, isn't it fucking crazy that they're in seventh place right now? Or eighth place or whatever? Yeah, again, it just goes back to, look, they had two events where they got a great bracket. If they don't get it at Major 3, I expect them to be out in loser one. No big I mean, what, what, I'm not defending them again, Pat, but what is a great bracket? Because they're going to play a team that's also heretics, shit. Or they played... Who did they play? Caroline played Heretics. Who did they play? They played... Uh, I can't remember. Was it, was they, it they at played, Thieves? They played Thieves. Minnesota? Minnesota they played Thieves and Rocker. They played Thieves and Rocker. They, yeah. played, they Rocker. played the worst Rocker team ever. Um, I mean, yeah, but they're like at the same... I'm not, like, again, not defending them, but like they're going to play the same shit teams in the loser's bracket. They, the no, top four they played Thieves moving. and Legion. And they beat Legion game five, round 11, and they... The thieves one, thieves sucked. No thieves, thieves, or yeah, they, they, yeah, they beat the thieves. Yeah, you're right. I just don't know. Like that was that major one, uh, and then that... everyone is so ass, bro. Outside the top four, these guys just like at least online they look worse than the rest of them. But yeah, they got they, keep they got, doing they got online, thieves apparently. twice, bro. They got pre roster change thieves twice. <clears throat> yeah, they got they got the they got the lat lat lag cheese like the verses the fucking curse. Let's move on to the next series of the day. We have the Boston Breach going up against the Miami Heretics. We have Pentagram and Beans coming in for Boston over Slasher and Asim. And then we got Real coming in for the Miami Heretics. This one ended in 3-2 fashion. It was a Neslo for the Miami Heretics. They were able to take the second map S&D, the fourth Pseudo map Nezla. Vista, and the last map. What's up, uh, Sam? It's a pseudo Nuzla. It's a mini they lost Nuzla. the control. What do we call this? Like, uh, yeah, I think it's, they, they did lose the control. It was kind of like, uh, well, how? What's a Neslo? Is it the two three five, two, three, five. or is two, it three, the five. one I, I respawn always, win? I, I always say one respawn win, two searches. That's always the true. That's the ne that's a Neslo. But I mean, if you uh, want to, Neslo was the swing two, mode. Two three five. Winning the, mode, but... winning the swing mode. Yeah, I soft agree. Neslo? Take a look here at the stat sheet. We'll take a look here. Uh, so. Pretty much the story in this one is that Boston went up 2-1. Uh, it was definitely a little shaky, but uh, they did go up 2-1, and then 
they kind of collapsed, uh, especially in the last S and D. I think we kind of saw it all in, unfold. But they collapsed in map two. They collapsed in map two. They, 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 they super they collapsed in map two as well. Yeah, they super. Bro, they were yeah, up five, five two, two, map two in the yeah. map number two, and uh, and we'll get there with the clips. But they just started to overheat, bro. Boston just started running at them. I don't know if they thought because they only needed one more round, they can just like do dumb shit and <laughs> start running around. But bro. they were literally just running. It felt like they just thought they could do this, anything this, in a map. This is what ball. this team's gonna be, guys. I, I don't I don't see them becoming a super disciplined team. They're going to run around. It's gonna work sometimes. And seems gonna drop a million kills. And Ben Bean's gonna say dead a lot, and sometimes they're gonna get fucking slammed. <laughs> and they still have the issue that they, their past teams have not have had, which is they get to game five, they're not able to execute their game plan. And Miami kind of outplayed them on that that high rise S and D when it was all said and done. Yeah, I agree with that. He might not know how to play, but that guy can get some fucking kills. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. he's he hella kills. talented. He's hella fucking I've, talented. I think it's just like the the mentality of how Boston wants to play cottage just completely shifted. They went away from like the structure. Um, like system gameplay in which Asim and Austin wanted to kind of like they're better than Seattle, but Seattle esque Call of Duty. Um, Boston's comms are also great in the series. I'm sure we'll yeah. do the listening, but yeah. it's just controlled chaos. You can see it on the mini map. You can tell by the way that they're playing. They're just they kind of have strayed away from the system to more let Snoopy run around the map and kind of play around it, see what can happen. And to Ben's point, sometimes it'll work and it'll look really good and cool and flashy and then other times they'll play against teams that can track names and control the game and they're gonna get absolutely torn apart the one thing yeah. i will say though is this is like a pretty much a new team right with two new people coming in like getting like s and s and d and control are always the hardest um game mode so whenever you make a lot of changes just because they require so much more chemistry and like understanding play styles and then going over strategy and all that stuff and um i mean they played the they played the first s and d you know fairly good they they did troll it but like outside of that i mean i i, I like I like the way Snoopy played. Like Snoopy played really well, but I, I think a lot of his issues have always been like his decision making and just his comms. So if he can get those like ironed out and better, like I mean, I think this team's going to be pretty decent. But Beans, I like Beans, bro. I said this before um, when he He's wasn't good. picked up um, by like LAT because like they picked up a uh, nasty off of his challengers roster. I'm like, dude, Beans is a shooter. Like he, Beans gets a, a a bad rap because of his last stint on Boston, but like that guy's always been a shooter and he he put up a lot of damage. He had some good maps. Um, he's a good player. I think yeah. Beans is, is great. I, I think the only issue is that last year when he was on Boston, he was a shooter in search, and then in the respawn, you know, it was a little bit tricky. I thought he was pretty even across all the maps in this series, which was nice. I know they all got kind of fried um, on that Vista the thing is though, at with, the end. The thing is, though, with Beans, I actually feel like this game fits his play style more. Like, he was also really good at Vanguard. Um, yeah. Like, he he's sneakily better at games that, like, I guess require more mechanical skill. A lot of people would be like, oh, that guy's, like, slow and stuff. But no, nah, like, he's he plays he plays pretty aggressive in that AR role, and he, he farms skills and damage. So, like, this game does fit his play style more. And, yeah, he's he, he played well, like, think, for, for think, his debut. I think, ultimately, like, they need, they need... Ben's a great search player. He was a, one of the best search players in, in Challengers this year. Uh, they need him to to work with the squad and improve this game five situation and the round 11 situation because it's been really poor this year. They won one round 11. They've won one game five all year. If they're going to want to make it to champs, they're going to want to grind out loser bracket matches and like get points to land. Like they're going to need to figure out how to win game fives because I don't see them playing clean enough to really get people done in three or four maps that consistently. I expected more out of Pentagram. Um, I think like this is probably going to be one of his easier matches. I think being a sub on these lower tier teams is like the hardest it's ever been because of how stacked the top four are. But like when you're coming out and playing Miami and you're playing like some of the worst subs in the league, at least well, Real, Real played really well, but like medals has been fucking Hobby's terrible. Their sub now. Oh, Hobby, wait, they swapped they roles? They swapped roles. Yeah, I was going to bring that up once we got Hobby's Oh, I didn't, even, I didn't even know. What they the did swap yeah, roles. Are flex yeah. now. I thought that was interesting, too, that they swapped roles. I was going to ask you guys what you think about that with Florida switching. I actually like it. You like it, Sam? I actually Me do like Meadows it. Meadows had an AR on Rio. It looked, it looked a little wonky. I like it because Meadows was on, like, you never really got a middle ground performance from him. It was usually, like, high engagement 0. 0.7 or 1.2. And I think that like just giving him the AR was a way to slow him down a little bit. And I think Javi, who obviously has been a main sub in the past, I don't think it's like mm -hmm. an insane dynamic shift for him to be able to go to a full-time sub. Um, so I actually don't mind the play style shift. I think it's kind of 
just to bring metals a little bit closer to like a 0.9 1.0 situation <laughs> and it's still not happening both of them have oh yeah no, they both got fucking yeah. shit stomps but, but i'm bro, saying i think that's probably I mean, we, we could all change. agree real is probably the superstar for this for this uh, bro, he, series. Yeah. he had a series yeah. today bro he played great fucking series. great call it, dude i love seeing real in there too bro, i've been waiting I for mean, him to play i mean i think i think what's big time is we can talk about the response but bro he was everything in both s and d's dropping double digits like yeah. if he's yeah. contributing in that way for them this year, I think it's going to raise Bro, a whole lot. Same with Lucky. Stuff, Lucky's understand. another one who played really well in both S and too. Lucky's Lucky's been sneakily good for this team. Like whenever they like actually put up wins, and at least online, obviously they haven't been able to put one, but he's always played pretty good for their team. Hey, bro, I said that shit. Um, he's been he's been their best player for a minute. Yeah, he's been I need a, the I most need to consistent player. Bro. What the fuck happened to Medals? At the beginning of the year, I still remember us being in the call whenever we would watch them. They were playing well. We were saying that Medals was good. Like he passed the eye test. Like you could tell yeah. this guy was a good sub. He was a shooter. He moved. But ever since then, bro, this guy has been on a fucking tear of just points of it. It's just decision making, bro. That's all it comes down to. He's clearly he's a very been, talented he's been player. Cooked. This is what happens. I think that's the reasoning for the flex change, to be honest. Yeah, yeah and the and the change as well. I know because when you're going through like a role change like that, it can be pretty difficult sometimes, especially if you go it. Especially which way you're changing, but you got to learn like new timings, new routes. Like you got to get comfortable with a gun as well. So maybe he's just not comfortable yet. But I also think just simplifying the game for some of these guys. And this goes for like a lot of the guys on, on Boston too. Like people want to talk about Snoopy and how talented he is. It's same with medals. Like, yeah, they do pass the eye test and they are really talented. But at the end of the day, like they need to make sure that they are making the most consistent plays every time they spawn up. And that they're making the right decision on the map. And I think sometimes you just kind of get the sprints. Like, this, when you get the sprints, bro, you live or die by it, bro. You're pretty much just hoping that you win your fights. And if you win your fights, you're going to look like a god. And if you lose your fights, you're going to be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? This guy's drunk. You're also relying on good timing. Yeah, you're relying on good timing. Which, I mean, if you're a good player, your timings are good. But there's a right, there's a right time to do it, right, Pat? Like, there's a right and wrong time. Like, we talked about, like, different gears and shit like that. Like, you got to know when to do that shit. Um, but yeah, definitely medals has been struggling for sure. But Pat, what do you think about the series? We had Flo we had Miami going up against Boston. This one goes all the way down to a, to a last map. Both teams made a couple changes. I mean, where's your head at? Uh, where's your head at right now? What are you thinking? I mean, this could argue have been a three zero for me, but it should have uh, been a three zero. Yeah, they, yeah they, like, it could have been I, for sure. I don't. I mean, I think you know. Obviously, this is like one of those moments where you're like, "Damn, Boston, you look stupid." But in reality, um, this team sucked before. Right, even if they suck now, it, it there's not really like a big change. Boston? Yeah, like the Boston was bad before. Like let's let's be real. Like they obviously we could argue what r moves they should have made, but I don't I don't feel like they this move makes them worse in a sense because they were already getting twelve repeatedly. Um, and for me, I mean, look, if Snoopy's gonna come out and and fry this way, I think Ben said it. Like you're, they're just gonna live and die by it. And I mean, I don't I don't hate that out of them just because. The reality was like I don't think they were cracking top six with the old roster either way. Like, it um, reminds me of just Kyler teams. This yeah, entire yeah, Boston yeah, yeah, situation yeah. is Kyler teams. Uh, but again, I mean, I still think Preston needs to step it up. I thought Preston needed to step it up on the last team, and I know like with Austin getting dropped, I I honestly think I would have. I know there was a clash, but I think I would have preferred keeping Austin and dropping Preston. But for me, I need to see Preston step it up. I also Pre expected way more out of Pentagram. Preston's um, been the worst statistical player on their team. Yeah, I get it. Like, he's been super successful, like, for, you know, a long time. But, like, at the same time, if he's not performing, like, this team is going to struggle. He can't get away with it like he did on New York where he had people like Hydra um, and Kizma at the time, like, playing insane. Like, he doesn't he can't have that on his team. On these, on these bottom yeah, on teams. These bottom he balls, should be yeah. a star on these bottom teams. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we see it with Dill. Like, he should, he should be doing what Dylan is doing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think simple. it's going to be tough. If, if, if Preston was a main AR, then yeah, I think he can do it. But I don't think Preston played that bad today, bro. He was soaking hill for them. I don't think he got fucking slammed. I think he put up decent he damage. He didn't play good. That's the problem. Like, I think it's, bro, it's, we've had that conversation like, this whole time. Like, why is Preston playing okay, average, below bro. average, okay? Like, he should be, bro, he's on a bottom team and he's playing want, against you, bottom you, teams. You. He should be looking like Dylan Attach out there, bro. This guy is a world champ. He has been better historically than all of these guys combined. I think that's, e I think that's easy when you're like, not gap filling, though. If you're if you're if you're holding anchor bro, spots at, and I mean, being bro, able to play Vegas, like Vegas, like we can't even compare the roster. Like, bro, Preston to this team should look like exactly what Dylan looks like. Dylan's got a terrible team too. Like, let's just be honest. 
Like it's not like Dylan's playing with superstars. Dylan I actually think Vegas made some good changes this yeah, year. Though. I but, think yeah. the GO was a good pickup. I would rather have every single player on this Boston team than Purge. Like straight up. And Vegas. yes. <laughs> Yes, I know Geo has looked not good me. But even before that. Not me, their Pat. roster was horrible. Attach was still and good. Nero I love Nero was good, but playing just like Snoopy. Nero Attach is doing the same I, I, shit I, I, Snoopy I, I, is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you want. I mean, I'm just confused, bro. Preston is now Preston on the team. Preston should be way better than he than he is. That's what but, I want. But he's got to do like. He's nah, bro. I'm tired of hearing that. I'm tired of hearing that. Small things to make this shit work if they're gonna play this. Then, then he bro, should he, stop trying to do that. You also play, play how they're playing. He should be playing selfishly. Yeah, he should be playing selfishly. He should have been playing selfishly from the moment he bro. got dropped off NYSL. And you can't make this fucking argument when he had when before his prior team was Slasher and Asim. Like you're telling me that Slasher isn't blocking a spawn. You're telling me Asim isn't filling a gap. Like bro, that's what I'm saying. They still to play that way statistically. Like bro, I get Priestess has success. I like Priesta as a player, and I think like he has potential to like do good and clearly to win but like he needs to step it the fuck this guy up should period. not be a role player bro that's the uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make he should it, be I'm a gonna, role player with fucking kismet I'm, and hydra i'm, I'm gonna simplify like, it Wait, he's on a dog shit team Pre don't Preston, be a role player Preston was was pretty good in the response today the searches were not i think in particular we need to see Preston step up in the snds to help this team he's got the least kills the on his team i want to see him slay. yeah but he, he also had okay but he's also like Holding a lot of hill time for them, and like, I don't obviously yeah, gonna stop the holding hill time, bro. Like, go and fucking get kills. Yeah, I mean, I listen, mean, I, I definitely think. I, team, do I, you I, want? Do you want Snoop pushing out? Or do you want Preston pushing out? I want, bro. All of them. They all are gonna play this brain dead style. Like, there's no point if gotta, if you're gonna build a team out. like this, you gotta buy into the, yeah, the style of the like, team, bro. Why, why is Preston still playing the slasher style of COD if they kept him? But do you like, guys think that was the problem? Like that you had certain players, like you you heard Austin say, it, right? Like three of them wanted to make different changes. They had different ways of of playing the game, and then you had management. They were trying to. Think that's, of different... that's that's why I made the point. At the when we started talking about the series it's just a complete system sh system shift yeah, they're from on the same page the fundamentals and how they just want to build a, a winning system I'm to just, the confused. eight run and gun like, trade 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 because because like I, I'm, I don't, I'm on board with we, we talk about running and gunning and respawn and like they, they were not bad with that in this series the vista got them in a little bit of trouble it's the it's the fucking snds i don't know snd has been their problem the whole time i, I don't know if it's because they have a lack of i mean they're a new team so sd is a little bit tricky but like I don't know if it's a lack of concepts how they want to play the map, like plays they want to make. They were obviously up big in the Karachi and they blew it. Like I think that's more specific to the issue than they're talking about. Preston shouldn't get in fucking hill when they like look pretty good Preston in Rio and they were battling speed it the fuck up in general and play selfishly and get kills. That will help this team because he'll be playing just like Snoopy and just like Beans. Then, so I'll be I, then, the same then I think what's gonna happen then is we're gonna watch this Boston team play like they did last year. Nobody's getting in a fucking hell and not playing for the win and on the all positive case. Bro, they're not winning, or whatever. Bro, they're not winning either way. Like, why not? Yes. Yeah. If you're a if pro you're, player, if, listen, and Ben. You if you're win, gonna, it looks like if, a no fundies, bro. If like, you're going to buy into the system the of the way that they built this roster, you need to do it 100 percent of the way. You can't have f three of the players, 75 percent of your team playing one way and then press and like, uh, just, I don't really I'm know. Just, That's I'm not how it works. Like, bro, we got guys. Who you guys want to run bomb and and like. If we're getting bro, four dead and we're cleaning so the hill and sitting in bro. the... That is so irrelevant and moment I mean, it's got to get... Someone's got to do it, though. I, bro, I, I they, can, they, can, they can audible in-game. Like, yeah. whoever's gonna... fucking on the map. Like, just have awareness Wait, ben, to know ben, when ben, it's your job. Ben, ben is making it seem like if Preston isn't doing the dirty work, no one is, bro. We are playing Call of Duty in 20 fucking year. 24, no, bro. Because I watched Boston do that live. That's if the you come off... I watched this franchise do it live here. If you don't you come off spawn, if you come off spawn and don't bump the guy in the hill or block the spawn when you were the last guy and watch the pinch, bro, are you even a fucking Call yeah, of Duty player, 100%, brother? 100%, but what we watch too often is teams set up and they tweak, they rotate, and it's a mixy situation. They don't know who's going to soak kill time. Listen, like, Ben, I, I, still lost both ben, ben I would normally so. agree with you, but they this is the bed that they have chosen to make. Like, they went away from the fix of your point to Preston and Austin and Asim, players that know those bumping the hills, timings, things like that. They went away from that voluntarily to back to MW2. So if they are going to do that, they have to sleep in the bed that they made. So we're going to critique them based on the change that they made. So to Pat's point, they should be all in on this shit. They should be playing the way that they built this fucking roster for. Yeah, yeah Preston can't keep playing the way he played on the old roster. Period. It's, their search is shit. It's Which, I mean, shit, if you're Preston, he's roster. probably losing composure uh, playing this style. We, we, he's I mean, we, we that's move the on. thing. Like, they, kept, they, wanted, they, they kept him. Like, uh, for some reason, he, he was a part of being kept. Like, I feel like that's 
something he had looked up. We can we can move on. I don't I don't think Preston was a problem in the response today. It was a search is where I, I, I don't for. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was but gonna, it's, I mean, it's not the just whole today year. Thing, we're not, yeah, we're not yeah. just talking about. No, I know, but I'm, I'm, we're talking about. I, I hear you, but we're talking about the series in general, like. But that, the thing did is, not though, in the searches. Am I, am I, am I tweaking for this? I feel like back in the day, like even like like a couple years, like yeah, last year, I feel like you could look at a team's roster composition and be like, "There's no way that in hell they should lose a respawn to X team." Like this yeah. is one of those situations. I'm yeah. looking at this team from the top to bottom. The, like, yeah, their searches is why they lost. They lost two of them and they choked one. But like, bro, I feel like these res they shouldn't even lose a respawn to this fucking Miami team because they are dog shit and they're probably out slaying in the majority of the fucking maps situations and they should be with like the pressure they put on the map and the team that they yeah. have. Like, press. Well, I couldn't hold a goddamn hill on Vista. That's why they lost that. Yeah, exactly. But that's yeah. just like a problem. Like, I feel like it, in old CODs, you could just look at a team and be like, all right, this team's beating them and respawn no matter what. And. Miami uh, Insta broke everything on the Vista. Yeah, let's yeah. move on and take a look at some clips. One of them coming in from the second P2 here. I actually thought this was an opportunity here where Boston could have extended their lead, but I thought this was a little misplay from Boston. I thought right here Pentagram should have been playing with his teammate Beans. I think if he's staying down on Hill somewhere in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, like an off corner, like in a credit somewhere, he can kind of play off of Beans here, but instead he's kind of in like a, a one-and-done spot. He doesn't end up finding any kills. He dies, it opens up the, the the hill, and just like that, Florida were able to use their numbers uh, and break on in. This kind of kept the game close. I actually thought Boston was going to run away with it for a second. Uh, um, I don't know, this, that's kind of nitpicky, though, Tom. Like, I think, think even so, if ben? he does... Yeah, I think even if he plays an off angle, gets traded because they have the spawns in the back anyway. Like maybe it uh, saves them a couple. I would have tried to buy defense. time there. I would have tried to buy yeah, time. Yeah, if he's the AG corner, if you want, he plays if that you, weird like off angle. Which if you want to be, if you want to like, if you want to nitpick here really hard, Pentagram could have played mm -hmm. the corner by the gate and then played off the contact in the armored car because the armored car player can not only see the gate gate push out, but he could also see the sidewalk. So as soon as like the armored car guy gets the information that he's either getting engaged from gate or sidewalk um pentagram could be the player to reposition and and, and kill the player that he spots so yeah if you want to nitpick 100 percent pentagram could have played that much better than taking a 1v1 or even potentially if there's more here 2v1 um back there by himself yeah we also got a listening coming in from boston i know a lot of people really wanted to hear these guys uh, in a listening just because uh, of the infamous beans uh beans is dead comms um, but actually, I actually thought this was a good listening from Boston. I thought they sounded good. Let's tune in and see how the guys were sounding. These pillars, pillars. I'll jump on the natives. I'll jump on the natives. Hummer, Hummer, Hummer. Hummer, Hummer, Hummer. Hummer, 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 All right, that's going to do it for the listening for the Boston Breach. What did you guys think? I loved it. I thought it was good, too. Yeah. I think they sound fine. I don't know if it's just the way the audio is mixed, though. Like, if this is what it sounded like in my ear, this would be hell. Just because like, <laughs> I would hear Beans and I hear Preston, like, a decent amount. But then, like, Snoop and, like, Pentagram, they just get muffled out, at least in the in the audio mix. Um, I don't know if that's a problem for them. But, uh, yeah, that they, they sound pretty good. Yeah, then we hop into the 5-2 round. This is where Boston, they're up 5-2 in the search to destroy. All they got to do is win one round and close this out. This is where they start to go a little road. Uh, Rogue, Snoopy, he tries to make a play through Chicken Coop. Now, this is where I think, like, Boston, 
they were making plays like that initially. Like, they were playing aggressive. Snoopy was challenging everything. Chicken Coop, everything was working. It was great. They, they had a lead. Once you have this lead, I think they should adapt and slow down. Because if you're Florida, right, or if you're Miami, you're going to start thinking to yourselves, yo, they're just running at us, right? Like, everybody just slow down and just hold an iron and just wait for them yeah. to, to, to come chow. I mean, it's, that seems like... It almost felt like, to me, that's what happened here. Miami just adapted mid-game. They realized Boston was just running at them, and they just held their irons and just kind of waited for them. But what did you guys think? I'll skim through these rounds, and we'll kind of go and see how the comeback kind of happened here. But uh, it was Miami who just makes the fucking comeback, and we'll go round by round. But, Chris, we'll when, start with you. When, what, whenever you're you down by a lot, whenever you're down by a lot, there's two things that are going to happen. Either the team that's down a lot is just going to start just blind hitting, just running at, like, a bomb site as fast as they possibly can, or they're going to camp spawn. Like, it's yeah. one or the other. And they need to probably slow it down. Um, obviously, it was working for them for a bit, but, I mean... It's like, I don't know. I, I think I see COD in a certain way where like defensive rounds are, especially on some of these maps nowadays, are almost like guaranteed rounds. So like if you're like making those risky plays constantly on defense and getting away with it, you should count your blessings. But like once you're at like five, four, like guarantee one of these defense, bro, just credit it up. Go bridge, have a guy play underneath them, like stack a site and just play like fucking pussies yeah. and win that and win that final round. And like they're, they're getting these defensive opportunities. They're throwing the rounds away in the instant, and then they're, they're now forced to play an offensive round where the card isn't in their hands. It's on the defensive team to fuck up, and, you know, mm -hmm. they ended up, you know, stringing to come back yeah. together, so. I love the plays here from Real here in the 4-5 or five round as well. Like, this was, a, this was a really good play, because he makes a play through mid. Nobody's watching it from Boston. Beans gets shot in the, in the side, and I think, I think Miami knew their setup there, because Boston was kind of resorting to this setup. Yeah, Beans top satellite, Snoopy plays close, uh, and they read it perfectly. Real makes a play through mid. Kills beans. They they jump on the site. They're able to kill Snoop, and just like that, Miami's able to push this to a round eleven. I mean, it was uh, clinical from them. We'll take a look here at the round eleven and see how how this plays out. Uh, looks like uh, it started with the Boston breach. They tried to make a play here through B, and uh, I think we're all going to be saying the same thing here with the round eleven. Where the fuck was Pentagram going? What was he doing? What was the play call? What was he trying to do right there? Because he ends up dropping the bomb. Top scaffolding, folks. Uh, what do you guys think, Sam? We'll start with you. What do you think happened there? What do you think the play call was? Because I thought they really fucked up here. I think he just kind of blacked out. They didn't, like, Beans is, the only info they really had was, like, they didn't, they weren't able to check any of the actual corners on the street, and they also hadn't cleared bridge up to this point um, if someone had taken the timing. So he kind of dropped to there i don't know if he was assuming that he wouldn't be seen having a bomb here i think is the biggest oversight dropping there you'll see it actually gets pressed and killed later in the round because he has to go grab it but i think pentagram just kind of blacked out to be honest with you but, but this is what i'm saying though Maybe right it's like about it. like guaranteeing these defenses or at least playing like like pussies like and trying to like guarantee one of these rounds at least towards the end because worst case scenario if you play like a stack setup or a slow setup and like play for trades even if you were to lose a defense like in this comeback right by the time you get to five five if you're playing like trade heavy and not just trying to go rogue like they were on their other defensive rounds you're probably going to have a kill lead you're going to guarantee yourself another defense or you know another attempt at a defense um in round 11 yeah, that's where the fact does. that they were up five one or whatever the hell the score line was and now they're five five and they don't have defense means that they were just running at them and not getting a single trade for that comeback for the comeback rounds because right it goes to it goes to the kill leader right for, yeah. for defense yeah it goes so to like kills. What the fuck are they doing? Just can we play some trades and just like stack a site or play slow and like try to guarantee a round so that way we can get some kills and maybe get another defense round uh, eleven if they know, come they back. Struggle, they struggle with that with their the old team to play. Just slow so, down, bro. But I, but I I agree with you. Obviously, I wish we could see first bloods and all that stuff. Scoreboard's broken, but not having a plan B. Obviously, this team just formed uh, with two new players. It might take them a second to get good search, but uh, that's my concern. If they're just gonna like ego child people and doesn't work in search. There's going to get bowled over by people that are just like, okay, well, we're just going to be disciplined and you're going to have to work hard to kill us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have it to the control. Boston there, they were able to win the first defense. This was the offense they were able to win, which ultimately led them to winning. Uh, you could just see how they were able to do it. They flipped the red. They worked some trades and Snoopy Dolphin dives off the of top AC, works the stack. And I don't know how the hell Snoopy was able to stay alive here, but he makes the play. Uh, this is what Snoopy does. He puts himself in these situations and he's able to make something out of it. And uh, he kind of just dips around here. He finds one onto Metals, turns the corner, 
able to stay alive here. Another player tries to chow and heal here. He jumps in. He takes him out. Snoopy slides the corner, takes another one out. Boom, switching lanes. They can't keep track of him. Vickle gets caught with his pants down, and Snoopy does insane plays here in the uh, in the point here to get the, the offensive win here on Karachi Controls. It's ended up being a 3-0 victory here for the Boston Breach. And then we go into the... Vista. The Vista was uh, was honestly a really good map. There was a few mistakes that I saw in the Vista that I wanted to bring up. One of them being the P2 Hill. Uh, this is where we saw a lot of problems here for Boston. Now, I wanted to ask you guys what you guys think here of the pinch from Snoopy here at the end of this P1. Sam, I know we talked about it a little bit during the watch party, but you see Snoopy, how he kind of pushes through that right side of the map, and you could kind of see what he tries to do. So, the P3 hardpoint goes to where Snoopy's standing right now. Now, obviously, P2 is right down here because that's where it is right now. I mean, yeah, it's where it pops up. Do you guys agree with the play of Snoopy trying to push there and flip those spawns or not? We were trying to figure out what's the best way to play this hardpoint, like going from P1 to P2. Do you want to play for those P3 spawns or do you want to just put back on in and play through mid? What would you do? What would you do, Chris? I'm I personally don't like the side of the hill that uh, Boston is on for this hill because breaking it in this side is so hard. Yeah. Basically, you're only like your condition for breaking this hill is going through mid. You'll see Pentagram right now on that mini map. He takes that route. They were able to isolate some kills and get this. But like, I think that's more to the fault of Miami. I don't think that that's as easy as Boston made it look to like re-break. But I think you want to funnel them onto this side of the map. So flipping yourself there at least early into this hill for P2 is probably not a good look. Mm -hmm. um i would wait I, to do that later in the i think a great P2 example hill. chris is if you watch how mc played it yesterday on the p2s where he's up on that balcony he's just impossible to kill mm -hmm. when he's floating low and impossible for him to kill floating middle it's just it's just it, that guy can just stay alive and finesse it's, it's why that side is so bad also this, this hill is really player. easy to flip like yeah. if you're fighting where miami is now all it takes is one set of kills. You sprint down that hallway and look at where like where the the Boston players are spawning. They're spawning that like back bottom left cabin. Like so in 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 reality, it's not hard to flip. Play from the favorable side and then just run through. Just run a couple steps forward. You're gonna flip the other team. Mm-hmm. And then this is the uh this going into this P3 here. This is uh, a break that comes in from Florida. Now, I'm thinking this is going to be a really hard, hard point to break. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but Florida make it look easy. You can see how they do it. They have one guy late pinching front. The rest of them are playing through mid and playing around the back. So they use their numbers. They're able to work some trades. You can see Lucky and Real. They're able to make plays, and they immediately get the kills, and they get the flip. I mean, that was com that was flawless from uh, Miami right there. That was a great break. Is there anything from the Boston Breach side that you would do differently on this setup here? Because they do seem kind of stagnant here. You have I think they should be harder kills. Yeah, Snoopy's pushed out by say. himself. Uh, they just need to be harder kills. They're, they're, they're in too many one-and-done spots, and then if you don't win that first fight, the trade's not going to go in your favor. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also unfortunate that Snoop or whoever that was it. Snoopy that shot that guy running across the screen didn't finish the kill and ended up pretty much setting him up to get break. But um on this hill, um the back of the hill and the, the bottom outskirts. of the hill. Gotta watch the outskirts. outskirts. Yeah, like the bottom of the hill, like underneath it, and then the the back right where or the the bottom left of the mini map is pretty much everything. Like you wanna yeah, force them to run you wanna force them to run through the like top doors because you can easily get a head glitch on from the counter and pretty much watch your own front. Um, but as soon as they get around the back and they have a pinch on that pillar and they get underneath your stairs, that's when they're like set up to break. So, I mean, Boston were technically watching the right stuff. I think they just misplayed it in terms of their positioning, and it, they obviously was, got some unfortunate timing. It was Penn and timing. Preston because Preston was in that like that good spot to to watch both lanes. Mm -hmm. And I, I I assume because Snoop had called out that like two or three people were rapping, they kind of overloaded. They had no idea two got through. I think that's something teams will learn playing this map a little bit more but i agree with you like this spot yeah. right here this back alley spot is so important yeah well the problem is is, is uh p dog priesta he he had this where we out where, where lucky was coming from but i think when when the trades came in through the backside, i think the comms probably came in that multiple were pushing the back and he ended p dog ended up giving it up and then he it's, gets he gets caught yeah. gets they're also for, they're also forcing trades so like snoopy gets snoopy stops shooting at a guy pentagram cleans him up pentagram should back up Preston shouldn't even come back and help him. Preston should still focus on holding his bottom and getting ready to, like, intercept, like, any sort of pressure around the hill. And they should just play tight until Snoopy spawns. 
And then if maybe they buy Snoopy enough time, like the map is small, he can, he can come him. in through the front and repinch any of the players that are engaging from the front yeah. or the side of the hill and just reinforce. Like they forced that back situation and tried to like salvage it, but it was just pointless. Like you fed in right into their plan and then they ended up breaking you. We see that a lot, Chris. Like people don't buy time for each other. Like if you're mm -hmm. if you're not in a favorable position and you you lose a guy, like the the thing you want to do now is buy as much time, play a corner, wait for them to come to you. Sometimes people they throw away their life so quick that they yeah. didn't make anything out of the situation. They didn't buy any time for their teammate it, to make a play. Exactly. You know, it, you can it, still salvage certain situations. It's it's desperation. Like granted, those Miami players hit around the back. They still have like. 10 to 10 to 15 seconds before they can even get relatively close to the hill there's no reason to force those engagements in the back give them freebies or potential freebies and then now they have full control like just play just back up and play tight as soup and, as it, and, as and it happens again here on the second rotation this is an opportunity here for boston to bring this back and lock it in and this is how it kind of unfolds again for them i mean they lose all the trades again uh, and they get broken yet again i'll rewind it just to see the initial setup here or just to see how kind of like it all unfolded here yeah, I want to um, see this because what the fuck happened? Yeah, Boston. Okay, so so the, Florida was here, or Miami was here, and in Boston, they end up winning the fights here initially. Uh, you see, P Dog, he finds one. Vickle finds one in the back, but uh, he goes that he's the last one up. Everybody goes down, and uh, you can see they're on this hard point. You have number six spawning out for Boston. He can kind of pick up front. He actually loses a big fight there. I think if Priest, uh, uh, Priesta wins that fight against Lucky there, front side, uh, he might have been able to reinforce and help, but. They just don't have any help in the back. I mean, Chris, this is one of those situations again. It's like, should they just play tight instead of pushing what out the back number, like this? What does number eight do? Mm, yeah, number eight's just trying to catch a timing, which it, it gives... Number eight and number seven are both trying to catch timings. When in reality... So look, look at where number seven is. If you go back, number seven can do exactly what he's doing and watching the same thing if he just plays in the bottom of the building. He doesn't need to push this out. He could play at the bottom of the building play in the door. Corner. And watch both of these both of these cuts, right? Trying to overextend on number five. Yep. And number eight, time. number eight can also do the same thing. He can literally sit behind that wall that Lamar was sitting in earlier or yesterday, right? And he cuts that entire mid lane for number five and allows mid uh, number five to kind of finesse and stay down from anybody pinching his back. Like they're just putting themselves in bad positions when they can simplify their cuts so much easier. And they're just giving themselves bad timing because of it. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. You can kind of see how, how it all unfolded. Like, there's certain situations where, especially if they lose that initial guy, like, as soon as P-Dog goes down here, it's the same situation. Like, 3v4, like, play as tight as possible. Try not to make any plays and just buy as much time and, and try and get P-Dog back into the play. But mm -hmm. it ends up collapsing again for uh for boston and miami they're yeah. gonna break on in and this is kind of where we are all like yeah now nah, after two p3s this one's looking like it's all over it was two uh two really good breaks from miami also got to give credit to miami because i thought they coordinated those breaks very well Bro, i like how they took late routes sent numbers 100%. around the back and then had somebody just kind of slow playing front block both mm -hmm. those spawns and spawn do you, do, teams do you remember out. what i do you remember what i told you guys yesterday how like the meta on these smaller maps is where you like send the majority of your team on one side and have one player play for the late like late yeah. pinch slash spawn kill mm -hmm. they were doing that every hill yeah um they just sent man, they set man around the back to block a spawn and then the guy that was like holding the front he played and spawn killed those players that were spawning out for the breaking team yeah, and then we get into the last map. Uh, this is, uh, we're starting things off hot. It's Boston in a 4v3 situation. <clears throat> Beans falls off the map. Then somebody tries to make a play. It's P-Dog through windows. He dies. Snoop, uh, Pedigree tries to climb ladder. Luck, I love the heads up play from Lucky to jump on the fence there and make sure that nobody can kill his bomb planner. Uh, he ends up getting a trade there, and then Snoopy left by himself. There he goes. What looks like a round that should have went to Boston early. Goes over to Miami. We can see here how Beans was uh, fell off the map. He just overstrafed it, overstrafed the window, fell off the map, and uh, you can see his face right there. I mean, he lost composure. Beans is hilarious, bro. Beans is funny, uh, but he lost fucking composure there after uh, after he died. You can see him. Right there. He's just uh, losing full. So Beans falls off the map. Boston they lose the first round. Then we get into the three one round, and this was just an ace from Real. I this is just I want to just show some love to Real, bro, because I thought this guy was incredible. This map I called the Real masterclass going into the map five, and uh, he did not disappoint. He gets an ace in this round, or sorry, it's not this round. He gets an ace. What, what round? He gets an ace in one of these rounds, but he goes crazy this round. He goes crazy in a lot of rounds, but Miami they're able to get a uh, get a blood four v three situation. Um, this is when he wins the one v one that somehow went down to. Yeah, this was the one v two. This is when uh, when they clutch. Uh, he clutches here. Uh, I don't know why I had Real get an ace written down for this round. I fucking fucked that up. But 
Uh, he actually plays like a little late lurk here. I thought that Miami was going to choke this for a second because Boston do a good job on the retake. They find one through mid. They get another guy over here by Propane. And Vickel, he's last one near his site. And uh, Real, he just makes a good heads up play. It's a 1v2 situation. He's he's playing kind of like a little sneaky spot here, like a little late flank here through through helicopter. He finds one, and uh, he just calls uh, Snoopy on his bluff. He knows he's on the bomb site. Snoopy tries to go for the ninja defuse, and Rial is able to make the fucking play. So, phenomenal plays there from Rial. They were making the S&D look easy here. Uh, then we get into the 4-1 round. Uh, Boston needed something here to get things going, and I, I thought maybe Pentagram was going to swing the momentum for these guys. He's able to find one here in a 3v4 situation, or sorry, 2v4 situation. Finds two. Snoopy with another one. Last one up's going to be Lucky. Uh, and he ends up getting traded out here. So it was a good 2v4 from Boston. I thought there was a second here where Boston was actually going to make a comeback uh, and make something happen, but obviously that just did not happen, and uh, they ended up getting ran the next two rounds. So the comeback ended up never happening. Uh, honestly, Miami made it look easy in the last map. They won 6-3. Boston, they, they fall, and uh, that's going to do it for their series. I mean, Pat... We'll go to you. Any final thoughts on the Boston Breach Miami series? Any thoughts, man? Just one, Tom. Just one. Um, eh. What a thought. That's your that thought, Pat? Oh, what a fucking Pat, thought. That's your fucking thought. We'll do. Who is that, Pat? Who is that? <laughs> that's Nick Merckx and Exposed. They just tweeted it. They just tweeted it. Oh, uh, wait. Good, I was going to go back to full UFC. game. You got to throw yeah, it back. Oh, yeah, tweet. Oh, 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 that yeah. UFC right now? That's fire. That's sick. That's actually yeah. dope. Go ahead, I think ben. for uh, Boston, they got Rocker and LAG coming up, and then Optic, Tor Thieves, and then Toronto. So, this Rocker LAG set as an opportunity, I think, for potentially their respawn to maybe be really good against those teams and improve their S and D. The Optic won't be tough. Thieves, Toronto. I, I don't know, man. For Boston, it's it, the next two weeks are really key because I think this team might be in a loser's bracket. A lot going on here. Let's get lucky. I think if you're Boston, it, you're worried because Miami was definitely a team that was struggling. Um, going into stage three and, uh, you know, falling short to them. I don't think like this, this is where Boston needed to get wins. Like they needed they gotta wins win two here. of these three, bro. Now you got to be rocker and LAG. Cause you lost this one. If you get two out of three, you know, Optic in Toronto or L's. So like you assume that like Vegas is also one. You're probably not going to win, So you got to figure out somewhere to get three and guarantee you get some kind of winners bracket seed. We I saw like last... Vegas is one. They actually could win. Even though I think Vegas is the better team. Like. Bro, Vegas makes some brain dead plays too. Bro, all these series are just like when you look at like yeah. Minnesota, Vegas, Boston, yeah. LA, they're all 50 50s, bro. All I, I just think I just think Vegas is just disciplined enough. In Vegas is a step ahead of the rest of them right for, now, for sure. For Boston to beat them, that's my only concern there. And that's why I have Toronto, Vegas, and Optic. They're also just far more talent stacked right than now. some of these teams, at least the bottom teams, in my opinion. I think Nero's always Boston's? been good. Oh, yeah, right. Vegas? Geo's fucking, yeah, Geo's good, and Natasha's been gross for. You know, I, forever. I, I think they have a little bit more talent because I think the Geo thing was a great move and he's probably work of the year right now if we were to end the season. Geo, Geo is fucking god. But, he is really but good. I think it's I think it's because also Vegas just had fucking him. good teamwork, bro. They play together, they execute stuff together. Yeah, they make some brain dead ass fucking plays in S and D. We've broken that down the last month or so. But at respawn, they they conceptually do shit together and you can't say the same about any one of these bottom eight teams. Well, honest. I think the the main thing, Ben, is that their practices, uh, their practice seems to be productive. Where yeah. I think some teams, like, you know, they started the season looking good, and then as the year went on, it just doesn't look like they're progressing, which in my opinion just goes back to practice. They're probably just not being productive in practice, or they're not taking it seriously, or their camp is lost and doesn't know what the <laughs> fuck they're doing. Yeah, it could um, be a combination I, of all of them. Am I, am I crazy? I still got Gwyn as rookie of the year, personally. I think it's Gio. I think if Gio right continues now. the pace that he's been on since he's been in the league, I think he wins up. Yeah. The thing is, Gwyn's still leading in kills per 10 minutes, engagements per 10 minutes, damage per 10 Like, yeah, he's still Clay leading in Fellow everything. Can't get fucking, listen, no disrespect to Clay and Fellow, but like... <laughs> I think that's just more on cleaning up Gio's, Gio's team. Gio's just on better. a better team. Yeah, Gio, I mean, Gio's, yeah. But Gio's competing against Nero for kills. He's competing with Attach for kills. <laughs> like... Gwyn I mean, I mean, if you guys, if you guys want to go back to that cheese bullshit y'all talking about yesterday, Gwyn's top six. He's, he's uh, been I'm, placing I'm, top if six. If you're with me right now, and the season ends today, I'm, I'm, I'm voting Geo. If the yeah. season ends today, I'm voting Gwyn. 
But I think by the end of the season, I think it'll be a really good conversation between Gwynlins and Geo yeah, for sure. Yeah, still, uh, still a lot of cod to be played, but the the race is close, which I which I think is cool because sometimes I feel like with rookie of the year, it's always like, and we always know who the rookie of the year is going to be, like kind of halfway through. But this time, I feel like it could be anybody. I feel like they're. I feel like Geo's definitely making a run for it right now. Well, like he's been had, crazy. We had, we had like Shotzi come in be like pretty good. We had, scrap. It would scrap. Everybody knew it was gonna be scrap. Uh, no, well, Shots, like, Shotzi we, came in and literally was the best player in the game. Well, I, I we well there wasn't really I think, a rookie I think class him and, him in that game. Was L- there. Lins is a good shot too. People are mentioning in which, Lins which in the game? chat. Model for twenty nineteen. Yeah, well, there were a lot of rookies. Were, in the beginning uh, of the year, how many rookies were there? I feel like there was twenty nineteen. It was Shotzi, and it wasn't even fucking close. No, I no, no I'm saying yeah. how many rookies even played in NW twenty nineteen. It was Ender Shotzi. Was Toby a rookie? He played at BO four champs, but like he played uh, BO four champs. But I don't know if we count that or not. You, you, you didn't count. One. You didn't count Snoopy playing at BO four champs. He was technically a rookie, uh, right? That's crazy. Big Wake, Frosty, or not BO four uh, champs. Sorry, MW two champs. Uh, Mac. No, but those guys didn't start at the beginning of the game though. Wait, Wake didn't start in NW19. Okay, he was in challenges. Yeah, he was in challenges. He got Bro, I feel up like when, Yeah, I feel like when the CDL teams got made, like, Shotzi was the only Mac, real rookie. Mac, was there. Mac, Mac was a rookie, too. I guess, yeah, Ilya is uh, tough to count, bro, because he'd been playing forever, Mac, it felt like, at that Mac, time. Mac Meltz was a rookie. There was a lot of rookies in MW2019. It wasn't close. It was Shotzi that year. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm saying. We had, we had a year where Ant was, like, clear rookie of the year candidate, Paco. AG and then and then last year with who got Scrap. it who got it in Cold War was it Paco who got it in Cold yeah, War it was Cold War was Paco. Paco and then Pred was Vanguard and then that's uh, the thing Scrap though bro it's like every single year that we've had these Rookie of the Years like oh, a lot of them Chad are call, like for college chat it was insight. oh it was it was insight oh okay but a lot of the time like those rookies that come in are like one of the best players in the game I think this year we don't have that conversation like a lot of these players that are rookies are on. Bad, on dog shit teams. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's I think the, one, that's the problem with the one of these one four. It's making it one hard. Good players are. I mean, we'll see what the contract renewals and all that, but maybe one of them will take a step up to a top team. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. What? You think any of the rookies are getting on the top four? There's a lot of time between now and then, and people might be taking changes. The only variable is that I don't know what these rookies' deals are, and obviously the teams with these con situations you're talking like end year, man. you're talking like end of the year. yeah yeah they have a they have a contract option so it'd be a buyout thing you there's know? a zero percent chance that any of the top four teams make a roster change <laughs> yeah, for I'm anyone like, underneath I, I, of them. I, I was waiting for somebody to say no, that bro. i think I, I if think anything zero. they would make like a competitive fifth team with the known talent of the rookie class of this year there are zero there's a zero percent chance that the top four you better not say zero that's fine i'll I'll be there if i'm wrong but i doubt it i wouldn't say zero percent hold on hold on let's go do it let's go do it is is any player on phase getting dropped no probably not at this point is any player on new york getting dropped Maybe. New York is New York is the one team right now with sort of how they're depends how they finish the year. I, I think New York's change. the only team that has a potential opening. Yeah, yeah. For who? Though? I think the rest because of them. I mean, the are, that's are, all the rookies are subs. Like you're dropping Hydro or, or Hydro or Kismet. Well, Kismet Kismet hasn't had the best year so far. I don't think. Yeah, but so I think I feel like I, just I, the way I, that I, that team I, is. I, I don't think they would change. Game, I would not drop. <laughs> saying Kismet. zero. I, mean, I don't I, think they're making I, any changes. We've seen I, crazy I, stuff I, develop over. I wouldn't, I wouldn't either. Changes. I wouldn't either. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Like the, he hasn't been there. Like as the, good as he was last year. The issue saying. with these rookies is, I think, less about the top thing, top four thing, and more that. They're going to get picked up on all their options, and then it's a buyout thing. And no. some of the orders we're looking at are just going to no, no one ask is for four hundred k or five hundred k. No one. People in chat are saying, "I said drop kids." No, I'm just saying, like, because you were asking if somebody were to get dropped randomly, like, who, like, who's playing the worst bro, let's, team? Let's I'm move saying, on, bro. No top four teams. I don't think. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they do either. <laughs> I could see. I could see like if both. No, that'd be I, I could see like if um you know these teams stay as good as they are and like they you know they keep progressing. I could see like a world where like maybe Attach and Geo still play together and maybe they try to go for like Gwyn and then maybe pick up one at the you know next year. Like I, I think I, that would be a good team because I think I think the way it stands like I like Nero and I think Nero is good but I think Gwyn's probably a better player overall right now than than Nero. Like that could be you know a good. I one. think it is very likely that half the top four make at least one change in the off season. We'll see. You think so? Yeah. Man, we'll see what happens. Let's Outside move on. Outside of the top four players, cooked. 
Let's yeah, move on here. Uh, that's going to do it for Miami, Boston Breach. Miami get the better of Boston in this one. They get the 3-2 victory. Uh, we'll see what happens with them moving forward. But we had the last series of the day. We got the New York Subliners going up against the Minnesota Rocker. This one ended in a 3-1 finish for the New York Subliners. We'll take a look here at the stat sheet. Uh, looking like a green carpet almost for the New York uh, Subliners, yeah. except for the Bulldog, who went a little negative there, but still doing his thing in the damage department. Uh, Pat, we'll start with you on this series, New York versus Minnesota. What did you think? Uh, These guys were stat padding, bro. They you were think so? The stats. Like, <laughs> they were playing with their food, bro. No way. You think what? so, Yo, Pat? Andy, what happened, my guy? He, he didn't have a. I haven't seen a neg 30 plus line in a minute. Really? Yeah, cooked. That Pat, my only, vivid my roster thing is, is, uh, is that I, if this is a one-off series, I'd be like, oh, New York's playing for stats, wherever they'll watch a VOD and clean up. It's been their problem in a couple of these online series throughout this year where they just should win these maps and modes a little bit cleaner, especially in respawn, but they kind of play with their food, let teams hang around a little bit at hard point and make it a little bit sketchy. Like, they've still got some things they got to work on because against better teams, when they make these kind of mistakes, it's not going to end particularly well for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we no. saw it. We saw it against Optic, in uh, for example, like at the major. I think Optic kind of punched them in a number of situations. Yeah, Sam, what did you think about the series, New York versus Minnesota? Got a obviously got a good look at uh, Gunless and Standy again. Uh, Standy obviously had a rough series, but what did you think about the series? Um, I mean, other than Eli, I think the hard points were competitive. Um, we saw that. I mean, we saw that even yesterday when they played as well. Um, so like, there's. They, I don't think that they were expecting to win either of their series this weekend, playing two top four teams. Um, kind so of if a you're gonna come draw, out, for sure, it's a, yeah, it is it's a, a tough draw, draw for a new roster. Um, they won the search yeah. today, which was great, especially against a team like New York, um, where they got absolutely battered yesterday by Phase. So I think that's that's something good for the camp. But um, their respawns, like even though they're losing them, they don't look horrible in even with Eli struggling the way that he did in the map four. Like Rockers respawns don't seem that far off um it's hard to judge right now because again they're, they're playing teams that are, they're, are clearly better than them but when you go up against rosters like you know miami boston whatever if you're a rocker you have to feel confident after the two series this weekend i think even new, on the losses new york was putting on the pressure in this series they were fucking flying like no, they were. eli got cooked but like they still did a decent like job of managing the pressure and like translating it into like points whenever they could um I like the rocker roster change. I want to see them play the bottom teams because like, as we know, like the top four teams are just so stacked that like, it's not surprising. It's hard to, to talk them. about it, the change, bro. Like we don't exactly, you, you, we can't quantify how they played against phase in New York, bro. It's yeah, exactly. Especially with new teams. Like, like our, I think the rocker team has probably the most potential to upset a top four team with the players on their roster now, but like, that's probably with more Wait, time in the, of the bottom eight. Yes, and, I, and, Legion, and Legion, right? I was going to say, I think Legion is yeah, for and sure. Legion. I, I always like, I always just see Legion as outlier because I just think they're actually a good team. Like, I But too. I just keep looking at everybody well, else. On the, on the Rocker front, they only have one match, uh, I think, the next two weeks. So it's, they're going to play Boston, and then they're going to play, I believe, LAG. No, actually, sorry, they have LAG and Thieves week three. So they have three over the next two, and they're all teams that I think they can do decent with. So I agree with you guys. I want to see them. You know, execute this this respawn concepts against some bottom teams and not be like the past rocker teams like last week. We're like, oh, they're just playing top teams. They played Optic close. They played Toronto close. Phase close. Lost a couple game fives. They end up just kind of going on that losing streak. I they didn't play those series close. They should have won those series. Yeah, I just want to see them convert these and 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 get to win his bracket here because they got a good schedule to do so. I also want to throw Paco some glaze because that guy's POV yeah. when he is frying, he went 40 and 20 in invasion control yeah. in a three, one didn't even go five rounds. The map go. three invasion control was like one of the most impressive. He he was like frying to the point where he was like only shooting the amount of bullets he knew would kill people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he stopped shooting at them because he knows that like the last bullet will kill him. Type yeah. shot. Like it was, Wait. it was unreal. He's in Notice? He was in flow states. So yeah, he hit the flow. Did you guys state notice sure. that Hydra converted to a hybrid? Like he uh, died. Uh, there, he, a lot of people have. A lot yeah. of people have. Shotzi's trendy. What does that bro. mean? 
Uh, the dive is, ship. Uh, you can dive and slide. So it's like it's tap to it's tap to slide still, Pat. But like if you hold down the left stick and then hit the like your slide button, you'll dive. So you can do both. Yeah, a lot can, of people have switched to it. Dive, yeah. No, I actually like it too. It's been leading to some nice plays, bro. That bro diving can get you out of some situations, man. It really can. Yeah. Diving, bro, the the reason it was bad before was it would give you input delay on your slide. You had to play slide only to get like the quickest mm -hmm. response time. Yeah. Whereas now the hybrid setting allows you. It's not quite as instant but it's much less of a penalty. So yeah. dolphin diving in this game really isn't bad because you can D hop on legend D hop sounds insane, you but you guys... can dolphin dive off of like ledges and stuff and keep your gun up. Did you guys yeah. see, did you guys see yeah. Paco dive out of the broken hole on Karachi? Yeah. Onto yeah. 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 That shit yeah. was so Crazy, funny. Really. There's like dolphin diving in this game is very, very, I, I, very I good. I seen Kismet. No, that was, I, uh, you talking about Kismet? Kismet? I thought Kismet died. No, nah, you're Paco talking about the bull though when he dove out okay. of fucking top broken. Oh, so, I remember so, that. So Kismet also converted they, to Yeah, they converted a lot, bro. I think, I think like most of the subs in the league converting yeah like, i know the vegas duo sub duo uses, yeah, it. Vegas um, uses it i think Lin, i saw Lin's using it today paco was using Shotzi it Shotzi started um, it, i think i think Shotzi, yeah, Shotzi was, the, first was the one i know 100 percent was using it initially yeah. I, I saw him. i mean other people could have been using it Shotzi obviously gets a stream up a lot so i know he was using it as soon as that shit came out yeah uh, it's good in the, it's good in this game yeah not for sure uh you guys got any thoughts before we head over and take a look at some clips from the series nope nope Okay, uh, one clip that I wanted to take a look at was from the Karachi first map. Now, this one actually is a grueler. This one goes down to the wire. Lamar's able to get a big one-on-one -on -one win here at the end against Kismet. That's going to win the rotation here for Minnesota. And take a look here at the setup. I actually think if Big P wins this fight here mid-map, this looks a lot different. Because yeah. if Big P wins this fight mid-map, he can now go top red, cut the map, and just be an absolute nuisance and just slow down this whole entire push. But this one gunfight here, I mean, Caesar's guy's bueno. That's a big win from him. That's going to be the entry here. And you can see how New York this is able to force their way through front. Eli, he picks a little off angle here, able to find one. But the trade comes in from Paco. And then you have Minnesota. Now they're scrambling. They're kind of turtle here on this hard point. Lamar, he finds a kill. But New York, they're closing in that gap, closing in that space. Caesar finds another entry, finds two. I mean, this is just Caesar's guy's bueno investing in his game. Dante in there as well. Sees this guy's bueno, puts some shots down, and just like that, the New York subliners get the dub uh, and win the map number one. I definitely thought that could have went Minnesota's way if they won some fights can, there. Can what do you guys think? For a second, yeah, no I'm problem, very, man. I'm very curious about a play. If uh, Linz at one point wraps their spawn sort of in the beginning of this, I assume Susan got caught crossing. Do you like that play, or do you think he should have? Continue to kind of wrap AC out so you can kind of watch the cross a little more. When, when, he, when, he, when he comes off spawn, you're saying like right here. Yeah, when he comes off spawn. So you think he shouldn't wrap the spawn, or you think he should no, want to no, make a play? I, I don't. I don't know what the right play is. That's why I'm asking. Like, he's asking. Think, no, yeah, he's trolling. He should. I think no, he, he should. Sh I would go he straight done. up the ladder to top fucking AC, jump into top red, be a noose, be go crazy with a saw. That's what I would do. Be a yeah. noose, just cut I, the map. Yeah, he could have done three things. He could have gone up. He could have gone up the satellite onto AC. He could have hit that yellow alley and like played like a crosswatch with like Eli team shotting this angle over here. Or he could have even like ran into bottom church and then like reinforced there because he knows that number seven like is gonna jump into red probably. Yeah, bottom church or, like has that timing. Too. Bottom church or top or go top Wait, satellite. Wrapping, wrapping this wall was so unnecessary. <laughs> Holy yeah. fuck. I didn't yeah. even catch that. Yeah, nah. It, oh, boy, Benji. I, I just think because I just think because of that look, they just get so turtled. They no, have no one watching the hill. Man. It was a good They're call. They're just all here. just tweaking. Pierce's back alley tweaking. Like they have yeah. no front pressure on the hill, and I think that may have helped with the traits to win this one. Yeah, yeah. he threw no, his timing facts, off by like two or three facts. seconds, so yeah, yeah. definitely would have. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think with, and he got the perfect spawn for it too, didn't he? he got the perfect yeah. spawn to make a play mm -hmm. on a pinch here. As a sub player, I feel like your eyes, my eyes would light up if I spawned right there in this, in this situation here. My eyes would like, this is, this has got flank written all over it. Yeah, but fuck, it, it ends up rotating back. Big P loses the fight middle, and uh, New York are able to break out. And great plays from Caesar Sky's Bueno as well. I mean, that guy pops three kills there for the break, so really good plays there. He definitely invest in his game so the team can invest in that first map win. That's what so. I'm talking about. Here we hop into the uh, S&D, Minnesota Rocker. They're up 4-2. It's oh, Linz. 1v1 situation. He puts some shots down into the Bulldog, and he jumps off the map. <laughs> I think he thought the Bulldog was going to rush him there. I think that's what he thought was. I think, I think God, he thought. His aura is literally throwing people <laughs> off the map. That's, that's insane. insane. That it is insane, bro. It's the Bulldog, yeah. bro. It's the fight. He's got that aura, bro. He's got that aura for sure.
But he jumps off the map, uh, and a little unfortunate there. I think he tried to hit him with the fadeaway. Bulldog ends up not reach out, and uh, Linz just can uh, we'll see, does he get a clay spam in the chat? Show some love. But then ends up going to 4-3 at the first second. Uh, Minnesota was going to run away with it. But then we go into the next round. This is the 4-3 situation. This is actually a 2v3 for the Minnesota Rockers. So you can see here in New York, they have the numbers. Dante's pushed out propane. You have one guy with them over there, and you can see it starts with the first guy, Linz. He's going to make a play, put some shots down. They know where these guys are. I don't even know how this collapses. It starts with Linz just winning a crazy fight onto the Bulldog. Finds Jesus. one, what big P with that? two. I mean, they both had the rival, to be fair. Mm. It was just good shots. We got to tip good shots when we see. Uh, we got to tip good shots. shots. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. But that what barrel a, out of there. What a 2v3, huh, Sam? From Linz and Big Peter. I mean, that was, that was a great, those were insane shots yeah, by Linz. That was, that was great shots from them. Phenomenal plays. And uh, after that, that pretty much solidified this map. I thought for a second, New York had an opportunity to get back in there. But uh, we'll go to the 5-3 round, see how this kind of unfolds. New York actually Linz do. Piece? They do get the bomb down. Yeah, so the bomb goes down. New York, 4v4 situation. It's a 4v4 retake. And let's take a look what Linz here uh, does here. Double headshot. There's one. There's two. There's three. He dumps on Dante there. That was a phenomenal <laughs> there from Linz. Phenomenal play. My bad, Dante. You're an animal. But you got pooped down right there. It happens. Uh, great play from Linz. The last three rounds had Linz written all over it. Just making plays left and right. That's what he does for these guys. I mean, he's a rookie and he's a playmaker for them. That was the only map. Uh, that the Minnesota Rocker was able to take against New York here in the control. This First is time where... New York's lost uh, high rise S and deal here, by the way. Yeah. No, no more ordinance needs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Ordinance crutch. And then this is uh, the one offense that was won in the invasion. It ended up coming from the first round here. You can see how New York, they kind of push out every lane. Look at how they just force every lane, push out every lane, make sure there's no gaps. They attack from all different angles and, it starts with Skies. He's going to get the two-piece to get in there. But take a look at Paco. He comes off spawn, and he gets right back into that play. I like that Caesar stays down, doesn't overchow. This is what I mean by buying time. He's buying time for his teammates to get back into the play. Hydra finds one, finds two, finds three. And it's a Paco masterclass. It's Caesar Skies Bueno opening things up yet again, investing in his game. And Paco's right there with the, with the three-piece. Great plays from uh, Caesar and Paco there. Love that. Then after this, it just ended up being uh, all defensive wins. Uh, you guys know how Invasion Control goes. Nobody was able to catch that point. So New York, they go on to win that one. And then, of course, we go over to the Rio hard point. This was the map number four. This is where we ended. I actually thought this was a one-sided Rio, so I didn't have many clips on this one. We'll take a look at the scoreboard here. And uh, you see, it's just a tough map again from Standy. This is where he, he really struggled. It was in the Rio. And, you know, that's one of your sub players right there as well. So... Tough map from him, but overall in the Rio, New York looked really, really comfortable in the map four. They pretty much led most of the way uh, and was able to close the series out 3-1. So good job by the New York subliners. Minnesota, obviously a new roster. They had some moments, but starting the stage 0-2 with two tough matchups. Do you guys have any final thoughts on the series before we hop into uh, uh, predictions for tomorrow? I want to say they play against some not top four teams next few weeks, but I was concerned when this roster formed. But the sub duo and nothing I saw in these two series is alleviating my concerns that this might be I want to say, an awkward one. I want to say something that I noticed about New York is like prior to uh, this stage, I feel like uh, New York was like playing a lot slower in their HPs and they were playing like they're, I think they're trying to like adapt their play style into like a more aggressive like play style like they kind of had in Modern Warfare 2 because their hard point's been like their one weakness and granted they were close. I feel like. They've been, they were playing with pace this series, and I wonder if that's just like a theme that they've been trying to work on to being a lot more aggressive and like just taking more team fights rather than kind of playing slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, I mean, Chris, you got any final thoughts, Chris, or other, uh, or anybody <coughs> left on the panel before we hop into some predictions? Not really, no. I thought I thought Gunless looked good. I'll say that. I, I was I was surprised by Gunless in this weekend debut for him. My bad, Chris. Uh, what was the last thing you said, Chris? Because I was put, did you say did you ask were a you question? Out? No, yeah, I was pulling <laughs> I said, up. I was pulling up the predictions. You said New York's moving. I said New York is. Uh, I think New York is trying to like play with a lot more pace. Uh, this split, um, it looked pretty apparent in their two last hard points. Granted, they were close. They were just like a slow. They were slower in their hard points the last like, couple stages, and I feel like they're trying to adapt. Yeah, I also think their team. They're that's what makes their team so great too. Well, I, I will say all the top four teams they can play at pace, bro. Like they can play good fundamental COD, but play play it at pace. And by pace, 
sometimes I feel like when we say pace, people think that we just mean they're sprinting. For me, it's like decision making. Like they're just making just the right. Yeah, they're just, just making taking, taking taking more space as a team. Like just being more aggressive and proactive. Yeah, but I trading feel like and taking timings. Yeah, a hundred percent. I feel like the biggest thing is just beating people to those spots. Like making the right decisions as a team and, and getting people getting that map control before the other team. Like, damn, he's shaking up What's that sorry, fucking pro. I, I know you're that? Right I'm shaking my pre workout. Is that a pro yeah. pre workout? This guy's about to get turned. Uh, but let's move on to predictions. Tomorrow we have Seattle Surge going up against the Carolina Royal Ravens. We got the Las Vegas Legion up against the Los Angeles Thieves, and then of course we got the match everybody's waiting for. We got Optic Texas going up against Atlanta Phase. That's going to be a banger to end this Sunday. We got a great matchup to end the weekend. We'll start with the first series. We got Seattle Surge going up against Carolina. I am going to go with Carolina here with a three-two victory over to Seattle Surge. Sam, what do you got? Uh, new look Seattle Carolina online. Let's see what Seattle's made of. I'm gonna pick them. All righty, who do you got, Chris? I got Ravens. You got the Ravens, yeah. Ben. Ravens three two Grilly. Actually, I want to say something. I got the Ravens unless O four literally puts on a masterclass in search because that guy in search is fucking good. Is he like, him? Really good. Is he him yeah, in search? He is him in search. He is him. He is him. He is him. That means he's going O and nine tomorrow. Pat, who you got, Pat? Who's on, who's on Seattle now? Same roster, 04 for Alec. Brezzy, Hook. Abuza, 04. Abuza and 04. What do you think, I got Slay? Seattle. You got, Slay? you got Seattle, Pat? Got Seattle. All right. And we got the Las Vegas Legion going up against the Los Angeles Thieves. I'm going to go Vegas Legion 3 1 over the LA Thieves here. Sam, what do you think? Agreed, Vegas. Mm hmm. Wow, Sam, you're going against your team. Unbelievable. Vegas Chris, are good, bro. They are good. I got Vegas, bro. They're a good team. Period. Ben? I got a Vegas 3-2 just as gruelly as the first series, but I think they got it done. Because I'm not convinced Steve's with getting Joe in for Afro is going to make them better in search. So. Mm -hmm. That's Slay. What do you think, Slay? I got Legion. You got Legion, Pat? Is there... Okay, and then we got the last series of the day. We got Atlanta Phase going up against Optic Texas. I'm going to go Atlanta Phase 3 1 over the Optic Texas. Sam, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to go game five, and it's going to be an Atlanta Phase victory. Okay, Chris, who do you got? I got, I got Phase um, just because, you know, they've been the better team so far, but. I want to see new maps, bro. I'm really hoping we get to see these teams play on six new star, maps. Six star, bro. I want to see six star. Hard Optic is vetoing yeah, Rio, so I feel like we're gonna have at least one in there. I think somewhere. we'll probably have. I think Vista will probably be in. I think Phase take has taken a liking to that map, and if it's gonna be a Rio or a Vista, depending on the veto process. I don't think Optic plays Phase on Rio Hardpoint. That shit is chalk. Yeah, then we'll probably see. Maybe Vista not play them sure. on Karachi Hardpoint. That's the only thing. You think like anybody's it. gonna play them on Rio, Sam? No. Realistically, like, you think absolutely not. If they do, they're trolling. Yeah, right, that's what I was saying. But who do you I mean, they should have. The last time they played, uh, Optic should have won. Tyler went fucking Super Saiyan. So I think they'll probably play Karachi. Well, Op Optic's gonna have to find a map that they're good at within this map pool that can contest Phase because if they can't play Rio and. Um, they are, what is it? Phase is going to auto veto sub base. Like their options are pretty slim here. Yeah, Vasion's gone. Vista six so. star and Karachi. Pat, who do you got? Um, Pat, Optic versus Phase. Um, <laughs> I, huh, that's tough. I'm gonna go with. I think Shotzi's gonna have a master class. I, I think okay. he. I think I'm predicting he is gonna have a master class. Um. In I think it'll be regard. a per J master class, and I've got phase 3 0 with a DoorDash. Uh, is this go. for 5 0 this year? Or is six this for 6 0? This is to be 6 0? Yeah. Slay, you got a phase 3 0 DoorDash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. never going to pick off the new series, bro. You just never know that. I didn't know what you phase were doing. Phase is with 5 0, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, you got to pick phase until they beat them. Well, I haven't done my prediction yet, and I actually think Optics can get this done in five, so I'll go against you guys. Well, what's their what's their win condition here that you're basing? They're going to get it done in five. Just just wanting it more in game five. They just play on a new map like a six star S and D, and they just get it done. You got they you got an optic Ben. Four? Yeah, game five. All right, Ben's got optic. Okay, Ben's ben. chat farming. Ben J. Chat farming. Is Why don't you do what you do, Ben J. And shock the world state. with one of the best pods they've ever seen in their life. Ladies and gentlemen, can we Look get a roll call in the chat? It's the legend. Oh, by the way, did you guys see the the new Codcaster bug? 
that's like even worse now. Well, what happened? There's a lot of cockcaster bugs. Like if you're uh, if you're in the hill, it shows the other team's colors. Yep. Oh, oh yes, that happened today because Kismet was laying in the hill today yeah, against Minnesota and it was purple. Yeah. And I was like, why is the hill purple when Kismet's laying in the hill? Shouldn't it be yellow? No I caster so updates. Confused. Bro, it no happens in game updates, too. Like the, the, obje the objective in game will just be white while there's someone in the hill. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ben Genesim. He's got those dogs out today. Yet again, he's stepping up to the green. He's going to line things up. He's going to let it go. And he sinks the ball yet again. Ice cold. Making it look easy. Look at this guy, Ben ball, J. Tom. Ben's never beaten the online allegations. Oh, man. Bro, I was, hold on. I was putting on a, on a shitty ballroom fucking carpet that had fucking slope. Listen, like, man. Listen, I hit a putt. I hit my first putt on I'm that fucking ripped the floor. putt first ripped try, the putt. Ben. You're not first beating try. the allegations. With, with a righty stick. I'm a lefty, Ben. With a righty You're stick. You're a lefty? I'm a lefty with anything like golfing, batting, skateboarding, oh, but, but I throw with my right, but I throw my right, I've like right with my right, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little like weird, I guess. Is that normal? No, I, feel, I don't think it's that bad. I feel like it's Me. not normal, bro. Hey, Tom, well, LeBron, wait, 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 I'm like LeBron's Robinson Cano. I'm like LeBron's Robinson Cano. Tom, but he shoots righty. I uh, think. LeBron, who? LeBron, LeBron's a lefty, but he shoots righty. Nah, I don't think he's a lefty. Is he actually a lefty? Yeah, yeah he's a lefty. He's, he signs autographs lefty. Oh, yeah. really? So huh. you're LeBron James, basically. Now I'm basically yeah, the fucking was... LeBron. That's, yeah, it's basically what I got from that. Yeah. Well, Ben, good job at the part. It's an absolute pleasure. Hope you guys uh, all enjoyed the show. We got some great matches tomorrow. It's been, uh, there's been some, some boring matches this weekend. There's been some good, some good moments, but I'm excited for some of the matchups tomorrow. So we'll obviously see you in there for the watch party and for the show. But guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Go to anchor.fm slash the flank. To check out audio audio sites Ron, go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gersh doing a phenomenal job running socials. Go to zuma.gg. Get ready for some more merch. We're going to be dropping some more on there soon. So make sure to go check it out. As always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Brush your hair. And we'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Flank, man. Take it easy. LeBron just never what? shot 4 and 23. Ah, shit. Come on, pal. What the fuck? Ah, shit.